I'm Ernie Chambers. I'm here with you again today. Still kicking, not as high, but still kicking. Because I intend to talk about the COVID situation, and I know there are COVID deniers, there are vaccine doubters, and I will lose some of you. There are a couple of other items I'm going to touch on first, and I will leave enough time to go into the COVID concerns that I have and observations. This that I'm going to start with is an article that appeared in the Lincoln Journal Star, March 15th of 1976. Yes, 1976. Headline, Chamber sees impropriety in FBI action. A 157 page FBI file on his activities is evidence of quote, quote an intelligence community which has run amok, unquote, Senator Ernest Chambers of Omaha said. Under the provisions of the Freedom of Information Act and the Privacy Act of 1974, Chambers asked for and received material from his FBI file this month. Some information, including the names and, of, and persons interviewed by the FBI, in addition to entire documents, was withheld. FBI Director Clarence Kelly informed the Senator of that matter. Chambers has 30 days to appeal the denial of any information, and he said he will do so, and I did. Chambers made the material available to the star, then discussed it in an interview. The file indicates improper activity by the FBI and perhaps illegal action by the CIA, he stated. A reading of the material indicates that the FBI file on Chambers was initiated in 1961 in response to a post office department communication advising that Chambers, quote, may be an adherent to the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, unquote. So what? There are people who belong to the Catholic Church, Baptist Church, Methodist Church, Episcopalian Church, Christian Science Church, every kind of church you can think of. But they were worried about Elijah Muhammad and the Muslims because they believed in self-defense, not attacking anybody, not starting anything. But once something was brought to them, running away was not in their vocabulary. Such an implication was drawn from conversations Chambers had with two persons whose names were excised from the file copies. Why were their names excluded? I knew who they were. Was there something that they had to hide? The FBI is a strange operation. Anyway, Chambers at the time was a substitute distribution clerk at the Omaha Post Office and the two informants were apparently fellow employees. That was a, an improper reason for opening an FBI file on him, Chambers said. Holding black Muslim religious views, by the way, Elijah Muhammad and nobody connected with the Muslims ever referred to themselves as black Muslims. That was a designation by white people because they name us, they label us, they demean us, and whatever they can do to create a question mark over us and what we're doing, that's what they will do. Continuing with this article, holding black Muslim religious views is no more reason for prompting an FBI investigation than quote saying, I'm a member of the Catholic church and that the Pope is in charge of it, Chambers said. As a matter of fact, Chambers was not and is not a Muslim, he said. The ensuing FBI investigation, which included interviews with post office employees, instructors at Creighton University, members of Chambers Army Reserve Unit, acquaintances at the School of Barbering in Omaha, and neighbors. It produced no evidence of illegal or, quote, disloyal, unquote, activity. Now, I had been arrested a number of times, but as I pointed out through articles that I read, they were false arrests 
if I did have to go to court on some of them, the charges were dismissed, no convictions. All of that was done to harass and intimidate, but I'm not easily intimidated. You know why I say not easily? If while I'm talking here, a tiger came bounding into this room, fangs bared, I think I would feel some intimidation. But here's something I know. I would never pull a tiger's tail if my head was in his mouth. That's a little advice for everybody. Continuing, quote, no derogatory information was developed, unquote, a concluding report said. Chambers said indications of illegal CIA activity may be found in a statement in Kelly's letter to him accompanying the FBI file material. Quote from me, the Central Intelligence Agency referred one document to, oh no, this is from, in, they quoted from that FBI document. The Central Intelligence Agency referred one document to us for processing, unquote, Kelly wrote. Quote, the pertinent per portion of this document is enclosed, unquote. If the CIA has any investigatory information on him, Chambers said, quote, it absolutely acted illegally, unquote. That is outside of its role of foreign intelligence. The only, is the closest I came to leaving the United States was when I left California after advanced boot camp or basic training, and we flew out over the Pacific Ocean in a wide arc and then came back over the mainland. But since a certain amount of the ocean off a of nation's coast is still considered its territory, I've never left the United States. And although I've never left it, I've never been accorded full citizenship, even though I was born here. Continuing. Chambers said he has, quote, not even remotely been connected with any foreign activities or operation, unquote. He has never been overseas. The CIA document is not identified among the 35 documents which were enclosed in the file copies mailed to Chambers. The Senator said he is, quote, more amused than alarmed by the fact that, quote, this vaunted intelligence community would spend so much of its valuable time in investigating me. I have never made secret any of my views on issues. If they wanted to know them, they could have just asked me. I wish they would live up to their name, which is intelligence, unquote. That's the CIA, Central Intelligence Agency. The 157 page file which includes other material developed from 1965 through 1972, shows, quote, a pathological fear of any black man who can put 10 words together and make sense, Chambers said. They were afraid of an uprising among black citizens because they know the conditions under which we live. They were afraid of an uprising among black citizens because they know the conditions under which black people live. I had to repeat that for emphasis. I cannot imagine what information was withheld, he said. See, if they had evidence of criminal activity, they could have filed charges. Quote, but there might be an issue of illegal wiretapping or other illegal intelligence involved, why else wouldn't they give it all to me? Kelly's letter says some information was exempt from disclosure, including interagency documents, the identity of confidential informants, some investigatory records compiled for law enforcement purposes and material which might disclose investigative techniques or procedures. If they were for law enforcement purposes, that would in, in, implicate illegal activity. If they were aware of what they considered illegal activity, why didn't they arrest and charge me? They knew that nothing would have pleased me more. See, an innocent man is not a frightened man if he's not frightened by nature. Continuing. The Chambers file apparently began to gather new information in 1967,
when an FBI report stated that he, quote, has become increasingly, increasingly more militant in his racial statements, unquote. They investigated me more for my statements. George Wallace made incendiary treasonous statements, in effect, cursing out the government. No investigation of George Wallace. But because a young black man had the audacity, the gall, to speak his mind on issues of the day, it led to an FBI investigation and a file being formulated. But continuing, this goes along with those false arrests and false charges which were dismissed in court. Listen to this now. In a 1968 report, they said he was, quote, increasingly outspoken in favor of violence for the Negro race to obtain their civil rights. So what? But I never talked about initiating anything. I said, nobody can treat me better than I will treat them, but I will defend myself. And it's up to whoever intends to have any kind of contact with me on an ongoing basis. That person determines the nature of it. If they treat me intelligently, that's the way I will respond. But if they try to put their hands on me, then it becomes a different matter, but they will initiate it. So their investigation should have been of those who had made numerous threats against me, which the FBI knew about but apparently never thought of anything about doing anything, hoping that some of them, or at least one of them might be carried out, continuing to show how silly they are. Enclosures included newspaper clippings about Chambers, about his speeches or statements, a copy of a critical letter written to Omaha Mayor A.V. Sorensen in 1965 about police community relations in black neighborhoods. I was dealing with police misconduct in 1965 and before. It's not a new thing for me. It's new for a lot of people. And because of those negative experiences, when a white senator brought a bill to the legislature to allow people to carry concealed weapons in bars and taverns, I asked, what do white people fear from each other so much because they go to bars and taverns with each other. So what do they fear so much that would require them to carry a gun? He said, well, as you had said earlier, you talked about Al Qaeda and ISIS and other things going on in the Middle East. I said, that's thousands of miles away. I'm talking about right here in Omaha or Lincoln or wherever you live. I said, my ISIS is the police. And the reason I said it, I told them, ISIS has never harassed us. Nobody from ISIS has ever shot us. It's the police I'm concerned about. When the dishonest white media in Lincoln picked it up, they said, I said or indicated that the police do what ISIS does, which is to cut people's heads off and things like that, which is not what I said. But white people misconstrue our words. They twist and distort them. And because a white person is saying something about a black person whom white people do not like, they take what that lying white person said as gospel truth. But because their gospel is from the synagogue of Satan, and Elijah Muhammad, based on their conduct, may have been accurate in referring to them as blue-eyed devils. The devil was a liar from the beginning. So his progeny or descendants or children are going to partake of the nature of their daddy. And since their daddy was a liar, they are liars. And the lie made it to Fox National Television. From there, all of the crackpots the right-wingers, the neo-Nazis picked it up, and I received a flood of threatening letters. So I sit on the floor of the legislature and explain to them 
why I say the police are our ISIS, and I gave concrete examples. And I said, as for all those people who are making the threats, they won't even sign them. They could even put a false name and I wouldn't know it. And if they put their real name, I wouldn't know it. But to show how cowardly they are, one guy wrote a letter and inside of it, he said he is from Alabama, but the letter was postmarked Des Moines, Iowa. So they are very, very clever, aren't they? Very tricky. Nevertheless, that was the kind of thing going on. And I was dealing with the police and they thought they could intimidate me, but they could not. They couldn't plant drugs on me because nobody, even the white people wouldn't believe that. They couldn't say, I cursed them out, which is not a crime, but they couldn't say that because I don't use profanity. They couldn't say I was driving drunk or even having drunk anything because I don't partake of alcohol. I was so square that if there was a fly on the wall to observe me, he'd have gone to sleep from boredom. So they had nothing on me. They couldn't plant anything. They couldn't frame me. So they took words out of context. And guess what those cowardly white senators did? Well, I don't want to go into that. It'd take too much time. One time, one of these times, I'll talk about that specifically. I digress. Anyway, to go back to that statement, a 1968 report said he was, quote, increasingly outspoken in favor of violence for the Negro race to obtain their civil rights. They didn't say I advocated violence against people for no reason. And if they thought I was fomenting riot, why didn't they arrest me? The FBI could have gotten the local police to do it because the local police on, during one of those arrests told me the FBI had asked that they arrest me, take a mug shot, and get my fingerprints. So they worked together, thick as thieves. One hand, the FBI washes the other hand, the police. But since they both handle skunks, neither gets clean. Continue it. Oh, in this critical letter to the mayor, about police community relations in the black neighborhood. It reports that Chambers was observed by FBI special agents, plural. Observed by FBI special agents at a peace and freedom party rally. What's wrong with peace and freedom? Everything if it pertains to black people. That was in 1968. At a 1969 rally in Omaha, memorializing Malcolm X. And that led to an investigation of me. You know why? Malcolm terrified white people. He terrified Uncle Tom and Aunt Jemima Negroes. If I would make a statement upholding Malcolm X, that was sufficiently subversive in the white United States of America with liberty and justice for all to justify being observed and reported on by the FBI, the Fat Boys Institution, I mean the Federal Bureau of Investigation. That's what was happening to me when I was a youngster. And they didn't intimidate me but apparently they were intimidated. In 1969, the FBI was advised that Chambers would speak at a meeting in St. Louis. My God, he's crossing state lines to spread this violent talk. A later report advised that, quote, the meeting ended without incident or arrest. What did they think I gave talks around the country for? It ended without incident or arrest. The FBI, though, by following me, had to listen to my conversation. I wish I had known that's, they, that's what they were doing. They would have really heard something. But to continue, on another occasion, the FBI was provided with a tape recording 
of a chamber speech in Denison, Iowa. I was invited by farmers from around the country to talk to them too. And farmers were the ones talking about violence and driving their tractors and other farm vehicles and demonstrating in Washington, DC. By 1971, the FBI report stated, he now appears to be operating politically. That is trying to gain additional voices through elections, thereby gaining more advantages for his race. If they conclude that I was trying to gain more voices and advantages for my race, that is a justification for being investigated. Chambers had been elected to the legislature in 1970. I'm going to scamper right through these others. Editorial in the Lincoln Star, March of 1976, headline, Getting the Goods on Ernie. And I'll just read it without comment. The Federal Bureau of Investigation has a fat file on State Senator Ernie Chambers of Omaha, including one tid tidbit forwarded to the FBI from the CIA. Chambers had indulged in the American habit of expressing his opinions. It seemed that some fellow employees in the Omaha Post Office probably snitched on him in the early 1960s, telling the FBI that Chambers might be, quote, an adherent to the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, unquote. Chambers is not now and never has been a black Muslim, he says, but at any rate, the FBI apparently thought his religious views freely expressed, so Chambers thought, constituted a security risk. The FBI has since put together a 150-page dossier on Chambers with periodic updates. Leafing through the basically harmless material, one finds routine facts about his parents, brothers, and sisters, his schooling and work and military career, what co-workers, teachers, and neighbors thought about him. The FBI talked to a lot of people and asked a lot of questions about a man who was speaking his mind. Nowhere did the government agents find anything to warrant suspicion. The common assessment was of a basically reserved young man who over the years became quicker to express himself, a bright fellow, sensitive to the problems of blacks. It concluded that, quote, no derogatory information was developed, unquote. If the FBI was looking for a threat to the national security, it was wasting its time. Chambers said he is, quote, more amused than alarmed, unquote, by the fact the FBI would spend so much time investigating him, but he thinks the FBI acted improperly and says his file is evidence, quote, of an intelligence community which has run amok, unquote. He believes, too, that if the CIA has any investigatory information on him, quote, it absolutely acted illegally, unquote, that is, outside of its role of foreign intelligence. The FBI has nothing on Chambers and has not really hurt him by prying around. To that extent, the story is amusing, but it is alarming, too. Alarming to think that in this country, your fellow workers will go to the federal police if you espouse unpopular religious or political causes. Alarming to think that the FBI has nothing better to do than ask your Army Reserve Sergeant or high school teacher if you're a patriot or a subversive, and all you've done is speak your mind. Alarming to think that the secret agencies hold files containing harmless but nevertheless personal information about you and your loved ones. At least a citizen has access to such files here, which is a step ahead of a real police state. And the waste is alarming. The American taxpayer is forking over money to the FBI to have FBI sleuths ferret out information they could pick up in the morning newspaper. Chambers is not shy about his opinions at this stage of the game. He shares them and has for some time with just about anybody who cares to hear. How many man hours were wasted 
in this unproductive effort is hard to imagine, but the next time the FBI director asks for more money to hire more agents, Congress has a right to be skeptical. And what of that brand new $125 million architectural monstrosity that houses the FBI? The one they're not too sure about naming after J. Edgar. Do you suppose we're paying for a building that big to house cabinet after cabinet of fat files as meaningless as the one carrying Chambers's name? Amusing, yes, and alarming and wasteful. That's not the end of this story. Some of you all didn't know how much influence I've had on this government, even before I got in the legislature, the attention they paid, the amount of time they took, the amount of money they spent following, recording a young black man whom even black people in Omaha, ministers, the Omaha Star, teachers were against and publicly attacked and would go to the mayor, to the city council and the schools to assure them they had nothing to do with that young, whatever they would choose to call me. That's the kind of person that I was. And some of you were not even born when I first went in the legislature. All you know about now is the hateful things say about me and against me during your relatively short lifetime. But I've been confronting that all of my life, alone. Never did I cry uncle, never did I ask for help, never. If I was attacked, I responded. This is from 1977. Senator Chambers is after, after FBI over personal surveillance. July 21st, 1977. After viewing 27 more pages of FBI files on his activities, now Senator Ernest Chambers Wednesday said he will urge President Carter to order the agency to release all similar, quote, nonsensical material, unquote, to the citizens involved. Quote, every piece of paper ought to be over, turned over to them, he declared, even during this second onslaught of investigations, they wouldn't give me all of the material that they had developed. Continuing, Chambers has now viewed 184 pages of material in his FBI file, none of which he said has pointed to any improper or illegal act on his part. That's what the FBI itself had said. Quote, they studied me for more than 10 years and found nothing wrong. He said, they could follow me. They followed me or had agents go where I was going to give a talk. They followed me when I gave speeches in Omaha. They were at Malcolm X Park. They were at Fontenelle Park. Following me, for what? They may have tapped my phone calls. So what? Anything they wanted to know. Ask me. 10 years they studied and found nothing. How many of you all could say that? No drinking, no chasing, no scandal, no taking money under the table, not even taking money for campaigning. You're dealing with somebody who's as clean as Clorox, the likes of which has never been seen, not only in Nebraska, but in this country. You know why I'm saying this? It's a poor car that won't toot its own horn. And with all the other people saying the hateful things, every now and then I will make a comment or two. But my head is not bowed. I'm in no way intimidated. Let me continue. All the files showed was that he was exercising his constitutional right to free speech, Chambers said, quote, there was no justification for accumulating those files or for retaining them. Their action is worthy of the kind of country they tell us Russia is supposed to be. Although he says he fully realizes that the president may never see his letter, Chambers said, he will write Carter 
urging him to issue a blanket order for the FBI to release all such material to other senators, other citizens whose files indicate no evidence of wrongdoing. One of these days, I will read the newspaper account of my confrontation with Carter in his White House. I just don't know how to behave anywhere, but I know how not to violate the law, but I violate the white law, that is, stay in the place they've made for a black man. You know what they want me to be? They want me to be what a lot of you all are. And you know where you learned it from? You learned it from white people. Here's how white people act. They are such brown nosers that they know how to step on the boss's shoes without scuffing the shine. That's how pussyfooting they are. They're such pussyfooters, they could dance on a piano keyboard from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean without striking a note. That's not me. And that's what I think offends them the most. Continuing. The latest material released to Chambers was made available to the star by the Omaha Senator, that, that's the Lincoln star. It shows that the FBI placed him on its so-called rabble rouser index. In 1968, he was added to a so-called agitator index sometime in or before 1969. The rabble rouse of terminology could be characterized as childish, Chambers said. It certainly shows no class. Chambers said he will ask the FBI to release any additional information from his file, which is still being withheld from him, and they released no more as of this date. His original request for material produced 157 pages from his file last year. The additional 27 pages were mailed to him by FBI Director Clarence Kelly in response to his appeal against the denial back then of further information. Chambers said he also is prepared to file legal action against the US Postal Service for possible damages as a result of his loss of an Omaha post office job in the 1960s. They accused me of being insubordinate. A reading of the material in his FBI file indicates that the dossier was initiated in 1961, and I, I've read that, so I won't repeat that. Chambers at the time was a substitute distri distribution clerk for the post office. Quote, I want to see if my later loss of that job had anything to do with all of this, he said. Quote, the first time I saw all of this FBI material, I was amused. But then I began to see how it might coincide with my loss of the job. Who knows what use it was put to I think that people who resent this kind of government spying as I do have to create as much inconvenience for the government as they can so it will cut it out. I'm prepared to do that, unquote. The newly released material from Chambers' file includes material gathered from 1961 to 1972. That is 11 years. He was elected to the unicameral in 1970. So for two years after I was elected, they were still following nose and sniffing around, seeing if they could catch me in something. As internal security file branded some of his public statements in 1967 as quote, violently anti-white and inflammatory, unquote. A 1968 memorandum ordered an investigation to determine whether Chambers was affiliated with the Black Panther Party. So what if I was? Look what George Wallace said. He said the US government can go to hell when the black students wanted to enter the University of Alabama pursuant, pursuant to federal legislation. And you know what George Wallace did? He stood in the doors of the schoolhouse and had the Alabama National Guard there to prevent the carrying out of a federal order. Now, I never did anything like that. They didn't touch him, and he wound up running for president. And you know what he said to his fellow people in Alabama? Segregation today, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. 
they loved him. And that was his battle cry. And he's a good church going Christian and an American citizen accorded every right that the constitution gave plus some that he created out of whole cloth for himself. They restrict my right to vote, where I can live, the kind of job I can get, everything. And yet there's no definition of second or third class citizen in the constitution. Well, since we're not first class citizens, and that's the only kind that the constitution recognizes, we're not citizens at all. Having been in this country longer than all these racists who are now screaming against us. Let me continue. His rabble rouser index listing identify him as affiliated with capital B, capital N, capital A, capital T. Chamber said he has no idea what that means. Although the brevi if it's an abbreviation, it could refer to black nationalist, but I don't know that. I don't know what DNAT means when the FBI attaches it to a black person. As a matter of fact, he said, he does not join organizations. The only exceptions he can think of are a single year's membership in the Urban League and past affiliation with the National Tuberculosis Organization. Those are my affiliations. And for a black man, they constitute, I guess, a basis for investigation by the FBI. Chambers was described on the agitator in, index as, quote, a well-known black extremist, unquote. Now get this, the FBI was not afraid to confront John F. Kennedy, the president, and follow him around and had him shaken in his boots. They were not afraid to do the same thing to Robert F. Kennedy, who at that time was the Attorney General of the United States and had him shaken in his boots. They were not afraid, obviously, of Martin Luther King and had tapes on him that had King shaken in his boots, all that under J. Edgar Hoover. Here's what they were told by J. Edgar, who was the director when all this investigating of me was going on. Twice, FBI agents reported that they had not attempted to interview Chambers because an, such an effort might result in embarrassment to the Bureau. They're the investigators, and I would embarrass them. They never interrogated or questioned me. Why? They didn't say Martin Luther King would embarrass them. They didn't say John F. Kennedy would embarrass them. They didn't say Robert F. Kennedy would embarrass them. And as much as I respect Malcolm, they didn't say Malcolm X would embarrass him. them. I'm the only one on record for what they said in an official document twice. They had not tried even to interview me because it would be an embarrassment to the Bureau. Chambers, one report said, would attempt to create adverse publicity in local Negro newspapers. There was one newspaper, the Omaha Star, and at that time they were opposed to me. How am I gonna embarrass them through the Omaha Star? Who reads the Omaha Star? But for those flimsy reasons, this organization that had the whole world shaken was shaken in their boots because of me. Do you see why? I don't walk around in fear. And that's when I was, relatively speaking, just a kid. Let me go on. A later report said embarrassment right, might result since, quote, subject is now a Nebraska state senator, unquote. They investigate other office holders and they hold higher level offices than being a state senator. What was there about me that was so much different? You all don't know the manner of man who's been living among you all of these decades, do you? And I'm doing this for a reason, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is. 
Chambers said he believes the FBI should have approached him. The files show that, quote, they received no information from any source that they couldn't have gotten from me, unquote, he said. Quote, I would characterize them as skulking cowards who were afraid to directly confront the individual they were dealing with. They were afraid to talk to me. They didn't say he carries a gun and might shoot us. Apparently, my loaded mouth was more powerful than their loaded guns because FBI agents go about armed. My loaded mouth, my loaded brain was more powerful than their loaded guns and all the power they were cloaked in by federal law. And yet some of you, and you're entitled to your opinion, not based on the facts, but your upbringing, your education or lack thereof, your experiences, have more hatred for me than you do the white man. Oh, maybe you hate me because he does. I got it. Okay. Malcolm X, what did he say about the house Negro? The master gets sick and the house Negro say, what's the, what's the, what's the matter, boss? We sick? Then Malcolm X, we sick? So here's what some of Omaha Negroes say. You hate him, boss? We hate him. Because that's how they thought they could get something, I guess. And it's precious little they got. But they left me alone more than they did these handkerchief head Uncle Tom's and Aunt Jemima's. Continuing and completing this. The very act of questioning friends or neighbors or acquaintances can raise suspicion about a person's actions, Chambers said. Quote, the FBI creates the image that there is smoke and that encourages other citizens to decide there is fire. There is an assumption that a person would not be investigated unless something was wrong. So what are we to conclude about the FBI's fear of questioning me, of even approaching me? Now, I said that I'm gonna get into something that's gonna run some of you all away. And I'm going to touch on that briefly. And next week I'll go into more detail and I use documentation, and that's why we learn how to read and things are printed so that we don't have to carry it all in our brain. Mine is like a Rolodex, you know, picking a letter, roll it, and get all kind of stuff. So I can finish this. And by the way, I respect time, so I carry my own clock. I can finish this by the time that uh, my time runs out. And I'm just going to read it. Nurses exhausted, frustrated with the unvaccinated. Let me just say this. I got my two vaccinations as soon as I could. I still wear a mask everywhere. Whenever I'm in somebody's establishment or where there are other people, I wear a mask. I don't care what other people think. If they refuse to get vaccinated and wanna contaminate their children and everybody else, that's on them. But I want it clear. I believe what the scientists have said. I believe what the doctors have said. And although I've got both of my Moderna vaccine, vaccinations, if they come up with a booster shot, I'm going to get that one as soon as it is available. I believe in this pandemic. By that, I mean, I believe that it is here. I have named it Cyrus the virus. And I wrote an ode to Cyrus the virus. And I'll read it one time. I've read it once, but not today. Nebraska healthcare workers are dealing once again with surge in COVID-19 infections. This article appeared August 29th in Omaha World Herald. Like many healthcare professionals, Heather Elliott believed the arrival of COVID-19 vaccines earlier this year would put the darkest days of the pandemic behind them. Quote, the very first day the vaccine went live, we were all on the phone that minute. How fast can we get a shot? We thought everyone would be that way, standing in line to get their shot. Elliot, a discharged nurse at Bryan Health in Lincoln, wrote, 
and a recent Facebook post, but that hasn't happened. After a surge in vaccinations this spring, the push dried up and everyone considered the pandemic over. She and other healthcare providers said that was their opinion. Now the virus is back. It really hasn't gone anywhere. Quote, people are running and they're tired, unquote, Elliot said. It's a constant rat race of getting this thing done so you can move on. I miss the days when you can sit in a patient's room and just talk to them, unquote. The recent surge in COVID-19 infections has left Nebraska nurses and doctors exhausted, dismayed about the level of distrust in vaccinations and science, and devastated that even healthy younger patients are dying. They have seven children in the hospital in Nebraska with COVID-19 now. And there are still idiots running around here saying they shouldn't have to wear a mask. Then when the child gets sick, they want the child in the ICU. Then they want the child on a ventilator. Then other life-saving machinery or equipment they want brought to bear. And then they say, I wish I had it. I could have, I should have. But the fact is they didn't because they are stupid. This is why George Bernard Shaw said, parents are the very ones who should not have children, some parents. And you can become a parent just by semen, sperm, fertilizing an egg. And this is the way bulls create calves. A fool can in imitate you and a monkey can outdo you in that department. Children, if I had a heart, children would be my heart. They're innocent. They trust us, they believe us, and then we hurt them. And because we're following some idiot like Donald Trump, we will expose our children to a lethal, a known lethal virus. And if you got it as a parent, you want everybody to drop everything and come to you as has happened with so many of these doubters and disbelievers. Then when they're breathing their last, they say, and they'll do it on television then, I wish, I wish I had gotten the vaccination. And I, I would tell every, everybody who sees me or can hear my voice, and understand me, if you haven't gotten the vaccination, get the vaccination. Protect you, your family, your children. And what do you fools do? You fulfill one of the things that led Jesus to admonish. Leave them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they will both fall into the ditch. There was another verse. Jesus said, if they would not hear Moses, they will not believe the one returned from the dead. There are people near death's door about to step through and they're looking, telling you it's real. It's a killer. I'm exhibit A, don't do what I did. Don't fail to do what I failed to do. And it bears out what Jesus said, they won't believe the one returns from the dead. Continuing. The recent surge in COVID-19 infections has left Nebraska nurses and doctors exhausted dismayed about the level of distrust in vaccinations and science and devastated that even healthy younger patients are dying. Even though hospitalizations for the cor coronavirus haven't hit the peak of late November, the dramatic rise in patients has been more daunting and discouraging this time around because many of the serious infections and deaths could have been prevented by simply getting a free vaccination. Quote, Whenever we hear, here's another patient with COVID coming into the hospital, it's just a letdown, said Dr. Jessica Jones, an infectious disease specialist 
at Omaha-based Methodist Health System, quote, we feel like a lot of this is unnecessary, unquote. Jones said that hospitals regularly care for people who don't adhere to medical advice, such as diabetics who won't give up carbohydrates or those with heart disease who won't quit eating fatty foods. But the solutions here, she said, is much easier than say, quitting smoking. Quote, with COVID, I just have to go to a clinic from Douglas County or my local pharmacy and get a free shot, Jones said. It's like going into battle without your armor. We have this wonderful armor and it's free, unquote. The World Herald reached out to nurses and doctors in Omaha and Lincoln after seeing a social media post from health professionals venting frustration about dealing with a new surge of patients, including many who are in denial about the serious nature of the Delta variant and who reject COVID-19 vaccinations. Then why do they go to the hospital? Why don't they stay home or just go to their nearest mortuary and lay down on the front step and say, take me, I'm yours. But instead they come home, they infect everybody. Then they want them to call somebody, take them to the hospital. When they get there, they want to go into the ICU. Then they want a ventilator. And these saintly people don't do to them what they ought to do. You made your bed sleep in it. No, they do all they can to save the fools from their own folly. Some said it was getting harder and harder to fight the misinformation. Some patients get from their friends or from social media, and it's harder to feel sympathetic towards sick patients who overwhelmingly now regret not getting a shot. Or this is a jab, quote, we are feeling compassion, compassion fatigue said Val Perez, a registered nurse at Nebraska Medicine. Quote, the patients have become a lot more demanding and angry. And a lot of my colleagues are angry that we're still doing this and that the, popular, the population has not listened to us and our recommendations, but they want the best of treatment. I'm not gonna be able to finish it. I'm gonna carry it over till next week. And, but I'm gonna say a few things in the few minutes I have left. When I, was, when I wore a younger man's clothes, I went to church and I paid attention to what those liars told me and thought it was true because I didn't know they were liars. But I read the Bible for myself and I picked up on verses and learned early on there was a verse for everything. And in this particular instance, there are three verses that I, I give. The first one, oh, that my head were water and my eyes a fountain of tears that I might weep day and night for my people. Verse one, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Verse two, what is verse three? I'm not going to tell you, but there was a man named Saul and he was a persecutor of Christians. One day he was on the road to Damascus to further persecute. And suddenly he was struck from his horse and a great light surrounded him. And Saul wanted to know, who are you? And Jesus it was, and he said, it's hard to kick against the pricks. And in that instant, that instant of bright awareness, Saul became Paul, the greatest, based on those who believe such things, of the apostles. And he believed 
so much in what he gained as a change of heart that he lost his head for it. He wound up being beheaded. With you all who are the vaccination deniers, the COVID deniers, the COVID deniers, you have been described in this statement. The punishment goes with the sin. The sin carries its punishment. Your quote sin in this regard is ignoring the science and medicine and the punishment is death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Your sin is to deny and ignore science. Your punishment, your wages is death. And there are people who will nevertheless mourn for you. So you hurt them twice. And while engaging in your self-centered ignorance, you probably have infected them too. I'm going to say at this instant, I'm Ernie Chambers. And as the canary said, when he discovered that the cage door had been left open, I'm out of here. Thank you.